welcome everyone to another CTC software webinar. My name is Chris Bercher, Director of Technical Services here at CTC, and today we are going to go over a comprehensive introduction to the project and family upgrader from the BIM Badge Suite. Before we begin, uh, I'm going to encourage all of you to ask questions throughout the webinar using the questions panel, and uh, I will do my best to answer them as as we go uh, throughout the presentation today. Uh, but I also will make sure that we answer any remaining questions at the end of the presentation uh, and in case anything else comes up uh, when we're done. And I should also add that this is being recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel uh, shortly after the presentation has completed so that you can review it at your convenience in case you forgot something or wanted to get a refresher on it at a later date. So be on the lookout for that within the next day or so. And with that said, let's go ahead and just get started. So today we're going over our tools. Um, so one of the things that Revit lacks is the uh, you know efficient ability to upgrade stuff, whether it's families or uh, a series of Revit models at the same time, right? We can upgrade a project one Revit file at a time so if you've got an architectural model a structural model a mechanical model electrical model a plumbing model right now we've got five Revit files we have to upgrade each and every single one one at a time on its own with its own button clicks and if you've been through that process before it takes a long time uh, same thing with content right Autodesk uh, or Revit has a you know, an, a way to batch upgrade families when you go from version to version. Uh, but it, it, other than that, it offers very little value. There's not a lot you can do with it. It's either you upgrade it or you don't. So um, we have a couple of tools and that can handle this. In this case, we're going to go over the uh, project and family upgrader and show you how this tool can do both of them. And you can, you know, speed up this uh, cumbersome and time consuming process. So today we're going to cover the user interface to show you how you know how it's broken up, where the settings are, kind of how things work a little bit and which you know where where in the suite we can find it and show you how all the settings work, how to configure it to do a couple of different tasks or different upgrade methods depending on the needs of the project. And then uh, open it up for some questions at the end. So I personally don't like doing PowerPoints. So we're just gonna go ahead and jump right in. So away we go. Uh, let's get into Revit here. So on the CTC software tab, you will have your CTC BIM badge suite uh, toolbar or ribbon panel or whatever. I'm gonna pull it down a little bit so we can see it a little bit clearer. And we are we have got two sets of tools. We've got our free tools, which are the lighter shaded purples, and then we got the paid slash licensed tools, which are the darker purple. And project and family upgrader falls into the paid tools. So you will see it right here amongst plotter exporter and project processor. And so you know, before I get too far into this, I'm gonna take a step back and kind of go through the current method of upgrading your stuff, right? So unfortunately, it's all it's very manual, right? Yeah, you, you in Revit, you click open and you go browse to your project file. And you know, you grab whatever version it is that you needed. So let's say I'm gonna pretend to do the 2020, you select it and hit detach, audit, right? Always a good idea to audit Revit files, especially during an upgrade. Yes, it takes longer, but it's worth it in every sense of the, you know, in every way possible. And then you hit open, you know, and if you want to save a little bit of time, you set it to specify so that when you open it, you can close all your work sets so that it's not trying to do a temporary upgrade of all your linked models. You know, and then you upgrade it, you save it, you close it, you do the next one and so on and so forth. And then you gotta open them all up and relink everything, right? You have to reload it from, do all your, you know, reloading your links. You know, just on this small project, right? I don't, it's not 
not, this is nothing to write home about. You know, my biggest files just a hair under 60 megs. This process just with these files takes about an hour to do. And these files, you know, it's just a demo project, right? It's not even a real project. Think of it if you had 300 plus megabyte Revit Arc model or, you know, a bunch of 150 meg mechanical, plumbing, electrical, structural models on top of the architectural file if you're a multi multidisciplinary firm. That's going to take you half a day or more, potentially. It all depends on, again, how big the files are and so forth. Right. So it's, it can be very time consuming. And then same with uh, upgrading content. You know, I think Autodesk has a uh, uh, their own little add in to do a batch update of Revit families. Uh, but it is what it is. Like, it's a quick little thing. There used to be a way to do it with an INI file and it would upgrade all your families. Right. And that's kind of the old way. If you've been around a while, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, there's other companies out there that have their tools. Not terribly familiar with all, how every one of them works. Um, I can show you that ours has some more options. It's not just always kind of a upgrade in place sort of thing. So it can be if you want, but it doesn't have to be. So inside of Project and Family Upgrader, we've broken it up into two places, into two areas. We have a projects tab. This is where you specify all of the settings that you need to upgrade a project file. We also have our families tab, same thing, specific for families. And then uh, Lastly, we have a few options that are going to be important to be aware of so that if you uh, if you want to audit your Revit files upon upgrade your projects, you can do that. Uh, we can try to suppress warning messages if possible. If it's not a work shared file and you want to delete the backups, we have the ability to delete the backup files. Uh, and then same on the flip side with the families. Audit your families. Do we care about the type catalogs or not? And um, we have a preview image update tool in here as well. Uh, as long as deleting any backup family files that may be in place, you know, the dot one, dot two, dot threes. So, uh, so I'll be back to that here once we get through uh, a couple of processes here. So there's a couple of different ways to go about this. Now I've got some preset stuff from the last update that I did. So I'm just gonna clear it all out real quick and start from scratch on this one. So let's pretend I've never used this before. And so now I need to go ahead and find the Revit files that I want to upgrade. So I would go ahead and click browse and go find them wherever it is on the network. And in my case, I've saved mine right here on my C drive. And but that's not the ones I want to show you. It's these ones here. And I'll go to my R21 location and we'll hit open. And now it's going to list all of the files that it found in that folder. Right, so now I've got all mine in the same root folder, but if you have it broken up uh, into multiple discipline specific folders, because we do that sometimes, uh, you have the ability to check, you know, specify the, at the project level uh, and then include subfolders to get down and find all the Revit files in the ARC model and the structural, electrical, depending on what folder it's in. Keep in mind though, if you do that, it's gonna go ahead and potentially find other Revit files that you may not want to waste time upgrading at that point in time. Um, so, and there's a couple of different things we can do here. So right now, I have all five of my files, right? So what I get, the, I can do now is check all five of them and upgrade all five, right? I can do it that way. That's one way to do it. Another way is to only load up one model, potentially and then uh, use this upgrade in current location, which will also then upgrade the links, okay? Which is a great, which is, you know, potentially a nice way to do it. Uh, or like I'm doing here, you can grab all five, hit upgrade in current location, don't include Revit links, and then just include the CAD links, if you have CAD links. And this way, I'm just, I'm going to be responsible for making sure that all five are upgraded. And that's how I prefer to do it. That's my point. My personal preference here is to always have my project files being upgraded because that way I can manage the warnings. If there are any, uh, I get more accurate reports based on, you know, different events that may have interrupted the process. So this is, that's how I prefer to do it, but you can uh, let this utility 
upgrade everything that it finds within the project file if you prefer, if you choose to. So, um, so there's two different methods for the upgrade here. The one I've got selected is upgrading the current location. So it's just going to find the files there and upgrade them and save them right there in the same spot. Okay, perfectly fine to do it that way if you'd like. You can also copy them to a new location and save them somewhere else. All right. So this is you know potentially handy if uh, you you need to move directories for whatever reason or you know and as part of tracking and keeping things separate and whatnot you like to have a discipline folder or a version folder for the Revit models. Uh, you can certainly do that here as well. You know otherwise maybe you're just upgrading it to send off to somebody too for whatever reason you can copy it or upgrade it and point it off to you know your c drive somewhere so that you can zip it up and send it to someone the the the, the possibilities and the reasons for needing to upgrade a file and move it are endless you can think of dozens of them so i've done it both ways when i copy it to a new location that you get a handful more options here remaking the central files if you want to maintain some of that directory structure, you can by checking the box to create the relative subfolders. And that would take care of any folders that maybe a linked model was showing up in or one of your CAD links came in. Uh, it'll try to recreate that directory structure starting at the, the folder that you specified here and working its way in. It's not going to build stuff that it doesn't need, though. So you don't have to worry too much about it or getting a bunch of residual stuff that's useless. And then you have the option to say, copy all my Revit links and set new relative paths, which potentially will create duplicate files, right? So if I wanted to copy all my links and set up my new pathing, I would not include all five Revit files here. I would only include, you know, the one that had everything linked into it, for example. And then it will, it'll bring everything else across. And then same thing with AutoCAD. Copy all your CAD links and set relative to the past. In my case, again, I've got all five of mine picked. I want to upgrade all five. So I'm not going to check this box. Okay. And then you have the option here. So I'm going to go ahead and pick my new folder, uh, which is in here, settings. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and make my new folder for CTC 2023 and hit OK. So now it knows where it's going to go. I've got my settings here picked. I have the option to specify how I want to be able to access my work sets after the fact. Do I want to leave my specify at all so it just opens no matter what? Uh, I, I personally prefer doing it at specify because I like to pick and choose which work sets I'm working with right out of the gate. Uh, or, you know, a lot of cases I'll close my links before I open just because it opens a little quicker. And uh, then this is the part that I enjoy probably the most here is the ability to add prefixes or suffixes and or search for a string of text to replace it with something else. So in this case, uh, I've got my discipline designators all listed here with the version of Revit being used, plus uh, the project number, right? So in my case, maybe I want to get find 21. Oops, that's not 21. That's 21. And say replace it. I'm in 23, so replace it with 23. So when the process is all said and done, now my files will say A23, AS23, E23, M23, S23. And then they'll all be at version 23, right? So that's that's one method you could do here. Um, maybe I'm upgrading a project that we did previously to 2023 for an addition or a remodel or, a, or whatever the case may be, uh, and it's a new project number. Well, in this case, I could add the underscore 2019-0130 to this field and then change it to uh, the new project number, which might be 2023 uh, 03 15 we'll call it okay so it's going to replace that whole string with this whole string and then in addition to that if i wanted to add a prefix or a suffix to this i still can do that no problem this part though with this find and replace especially the way i'm doing it here 
I, I have to be cognizant of what my actual project numbers are because I could be looking for the wrong 21 somewhere and it might be in the project number. So that might mess me up a little bit. I've made this mistake before, which is why I'm mentioning it because all I did was search 21 and sure enough, it was in the project number. So just want to point that out. Down here at the bottom, we have a final option here to override the preview image uh, with a specific view. So if, if I've got a view in this file, that I want to be my splash page, like a like a title, like a sheet view, or maybe it's a drafting view. Uh, you know, a lot of us do that nowadays. I can specify that here, but since it's already set up in my files to be my splash screen, my drafting view, uh, and I've got that baked into Revit with its starting view set up, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to just continue to use what's already there. Last but not least, I need to go into options and specify how I want to upgrade my file. I want to audit things. So let's suppress all the messages that possibly can. Give me all the confirmations at the end. And uh, if there's any backups, I can delete them. Uh, it's a central file, so I'm not going to have any backups. And then I've got my logs to show up when they're completed. So we're good there. Now I would hit OK. I'm not going to hit OK, because even though this is a smaller project, it still takes about 20 minutes to run. And I don't have 20 minutes to talk about while I let this run. So I'm just going to close this and show you a the project that I upgraded earlier so that you get an idea of what this is going to look like. So I went through this process uh, earlier today, and we now have a project family upgrader. I've got my projects, and I've got one for 2022. So with the exact same settings that I just showed you, it went ahead and upgraded all my files. It set up the pathing. I've got my folders because it had to do that final sync at the end and it brought over my CAD files along for the ride. So it did all of it for me. It named it accordingly. I had set it to find the A21, 2019-0130 to be 2020-0516. The number that i chose for this one and it went ahead and did it and like i said it took about 20 25 minutes for the five rabbit files and the creation of the, you know bringing over some backup files and all that good stuff so not bad right it, it worked out pretty well so <clears throat> now back to the family upgrader here now we're going to talk about upgrading families so with families very much the same process or very similar process right i gotta go find my content so uh, i've got a bunch of stuff saved over here there 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 oh nope there and there so i've got content actually i probably should have added more to that folder path hold on a sec yep i did so we're gonna Take a step back, do this, do that, hit include subfolders, and I'm going to hit refresh. And now it's going to go ahead and find all the families in this folder. And while it's digging this up, I'm not going to upgrade the entire folder because it's you know a couple hundred families. And I'm not going to make you guys sit here and stare at me while we do this or stare at my screen. So when it's going, uh, you'll have, you know, it, it'll suppress all the messages if we you know, so we don't have to worry about it during the upgrade process. It'll suppress what it can. Some of them require some pretty significant input, like uh, do I want to remove elements or do I need to disjoin something? Unfortunately, those things will pop up uh, on occasion. Or if, if it's corrupt, right, we need to know that. So uh, if there are ones that we, it's just a notification, like, hey, a thing is happening, okay, good deal. We'll suppress those. So now it's loading up the rest of the list. And then I'll be able to go ahead and select a handful of these. Um, but a couple of the options that you get with this is it'll tell you if there's a type catalog associated with this or not. And if there is, we have the ability to bring that along for the ride if we need it to. Right. So I just got done doing. Uh, a big task where I had to take a whole bunch of old content from 2009 through 2012, uh, I believe, Revit, and bring it from our 
archives drive back into our projects directory because we got to we got to do a bunch of family project stuff. And I had a bunch of type catalogs that brought it all with, just put them in the same spot as the families. They are all loaded in just like you think they would with the type catalog. So uh, this is very, very handy. I'm not sure if many of these do have type catalog, but if they do, uh, these ones don't. That's okay. Uh, so, but here I have some options here to out of the family, include the type catalog or if there are, delete my backups if there are, if there are any hanging out there. And we have the ability to export the preview image uh, for other needs. Like maybe I'm going ahead and putting together a catalog of all the families that we have. And I want to make them available on our website or uh, on someone else's website for someone to use. Or I want to bring them into Hive and I want to tweak the preview image a little bit more, make them more, a little bit more customized. I can do that now because I have a JPEG or a PNG for that. Not going to do it. Just don't want to waste any more time on it if I don't have to. Uh, and so now I have a couple of options here. Do I want to upgrade in the current location? Uh, in my case, no, I'm not going to do that because it's in a specific 2017 folder. So I don't want to uh, break that, especially if I'm not doing all of them, which I'm not going to do in this case. So I'm going to copy it to new, uh, a new location that I've got saved here uh, on my C drive. Could be any location that you have access to though, obviously. So we'll go back to my family upgrade. I got my families and I'm going up to 23. So I'm gonna pick that folder. And we have the ability to also create relative subfolders here as well. So that if you've got your content broken out into specific categorical based folder structures, uh, like annotations, balusters, casework, doors, ter air terminals, you know, electrical device, electrical equipment, plumbing fixture, structural framing, family, whatever the case may be, right? If you've broken your content down that way, then that is what you will see if this box is checked, okay? <clears throat> Very, I, I recommend doing it, uh, to be honest. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna add a suffix to mine called CTC. And I don't think I have anything worth finding and replacing uh, for many of these since it doesn't have someone else's designation to it. It's not a bunch of content that I've downloaded from another manufacturer. It's all stuff that we built long ago. So uh, I don't really have much to work with here. So I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna leave that alone. And, uh, you know, in this case, again, I don't know about the preview images. So I'm gonna leave it alone. They all probably are a little bit unique in their own right. So we're gonna leave it as it is. And back in my options, just to confirm, we're gonna audit things, type catalogs if necessary, and delete my backups. So just for the sake of keeping it quick, I'm gonna grab just a handful of these and hit check selected, and then hit okay. And this is gonna go. So now we're gonna get a handful of families. They're gonna be upgraded and saved to the new location and you know, for the most part, it's only going to take a few minutes to do it, right? It's probably going to take me longer to go track down the folder than it will to actually do the upgrade. And here we go. So here's the dialog box at the end. You get something similar to this when you upgrade projects as well. And it just gives you a list of all the events. So in this case, I've got 34 items here to review. Everything was successful though. So, uh, and then if there were warnings or errors that it flagged, you would see those buttons here as well. So you would be able to go ahead and, you know, click these buttons to kind of filter it around to see, uh, to get a, you know, a smaller or a shorter report. So you don't have to see everything if you don't want. By default, you get everything. Um, the projects one that I did actually, um, I had a couple of missing CAD links that I couldn't resolve. So those were reported in my list and I had three warnings. All of them were CAD files that I couldn't find. So it didn't, it couldn't do anything with them because it didn't know where they were. So it did exactly what I was hoping it would do. In this case, I'm getting exactly what I was hoping it would do. Uh, if you need to keep track of these because maybe you do have errors or you do get some warnings and you want to go back and track them down without losing out on everything, you have the option to copy this to the clipboard and paste it into Excel or into a Word file or go ahead and save it and save it as your own Excel file. 
to be used when when necessary. Projects and family upgraded log, and then I'll just put today's date on it. Oh, oh gosh, I don't even know what today is. We'll, we'll pretend it like I know and say it's March 15th. Actually, it's the 14th. Now I know. And then I can open it, but it's just going to look exactly like this. So uh, for the sake of showing you everything that I can, here you go. And then I can maximize the cell rows, and then I see what type of warning we got, the time, source, what message was provided, and then who did the work, right? And then you know, to make it easier, I can go ahead and grab this. We can do our quick little uh, filter here. So I get my sort options and I can say, well, let's just see the success ones. I can uncheck info, hit OK. Now I get my full report. Of those families, everything was successfully done, which is great. It's exactly what I wanted to see. And that, everyone, is our project and family upgrader utility. So that concludes my webinar for today. I want to thank you all for joining me. It's been a pleasure. Uh, and for those of you, this again, like I mentioned earlier, this will be posted soon. So please review it and uh, let us know what you think. Thank you again. <laughs> and uh, appreciate you. Appreciate you all. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks. Yeah.